It's time for Inside the Jets, presented by EY, building a better working world. Now, here's Bart Scott and Dan Grossa. And welcome into another edition of Inside the Jets, presented by EY, building a better working world. Dan Grossa here with you, joined as always by my partner. He is, of course, former New York Jets linebacker. That would be the great Bart Scott. Bart, how we doing, my friend? Maintaining, maintaining, man. Wish we were having Victory Mondays, but you know what? It's okay. We're going to be all right. Haven't had as many of those as we would want to, but hey, there's still opportunity, right? There's still eight more games here, and we'll get into that as we move forward through the program, but unfortunately, we have to sit down here and analyze what went on on Sunday at MetLife Stadium, and it was a 45-17 victory for the Buffalo Bills over the New York Jets, and Look, let's get right to it, Bart. I mean, there's no sugarcoating it. The defense here, three out of the last four games, they've surrendered at least 45 points. Where have things gone off the trails for that side of the football here over the last month, you think? Well, I think it's all tied together, right? You talk about no pass rush, not getting to the passers as uh, frequent as they were uh, before getting quarterbacks off their spots, which puts more stress on the back end. Um, and they're not really that, you know, stopping a run. So, you know, right now the buffet is open, right? You know, most uh, opposing teams can get whatever they want. And when they get whatever they want, you can't take anything away. Then it keeps you guessing, right? And yesterday what we saw is we saw a lot of cover one uh, with young corners against some of the best dynamic pass catchers in the game and a team that is dedicated to throwing the football. We knew that, you know, this team was, you know, the teams that have slowed down the Buffalo Bills have played two high safeties and made them earn it. And I gave up the big plays. And, you know, we went a lot of cover one, you know, leaving guys on the islands. You talk about Gildry. You know, I, I kind of felt for him, you know, after, um, you know, giving up the big play. But, you know, we could see that coming. You know, one-on-one 50-50 balls against one of the best receivers in the game. You know, I think we all kind of knew or thought that that would be the outcome. And it just have to figure out how to be able to execute and how to communicate, which is difficult because you have a lot of new players in there. Eccles gets hurt, so now you have the backup to the backup, and guys are doing much the same, trying to do a little bit too much. But also, you know, they they're, they're, they're still have to go out and, and fulfill their obligations on the special team side. So what happens is it's like, it's like the law of diminishing returns. Guys get tired. You know, guys are excited for the opportunity, but they still have to go down there on that punt team or that kickoff team. And what happens is that gas tank can get low. Uh, we got to get some healthy bodies. We got to get some guys back. We hope that some guys come out for injury so that, you know, they can have a little bit more depth so we can spread out some of the responsibilities. No doubt about it there. And you mentioned Brandon Eccles, right? The rookie, he gets injured in the game yesterday. He's going to miss three out of the next five weeks. And I think that that's probably another area of this defense, which is starting to take some hits here. And that's the overall depth. You know, this was a young defense to begin with at the beginning of the season. The two starting safeties on opening day who were veterans, the Marcus Joyner, Marcus May, they're already long lost for the season. Now you have Brandon Eccles, who's going to be down for the next month. You know, so you're playing so many young guys to begin with and asking them to do a lot more maybe than they bargained for in their initial season in the NFL. And when you go up against good teams, to your point, like Buffalo, who Stephon Diggs is one of the top receivers in the league, Josh Allen, one of the top quarterbacks in the league, coming off of the game that they had last week in Jacksonville, where to a man they were disappointed with how they played, right. you kind of had a feeling that the Jets were going up against a well-oiled machine yesterday in Buffalo when you saw the outcome. Well, the Buffalo Bills have Super Bowl aspirations. Josh Allen is an MVP candidate. They have veterans and, and crafty guys you know, like Emmanuel Sanders who know how to get open their professional receivers. And Singletary is a good and capable running back. And when you have you know turnovers and you give them extra opportunities, it just continues to put stress on your on your team. And listen, when you are thin, when you are you know at a disadvantage from a talent standpoint, you can't give the other team uh, multiple opportunities to get more bites at the apple. And you have to be disciplined. You have to win the situation, the situational football. Going into that half, this is pretty tight game. You know, missed the opportunity. Davis has the costly fumble that kind of takes points off the point off the board. So that's almost a 10 point swing because you at least get seven points. You at least get three points. But now, you know, you give up seven on the other end. That's a 10 point swing. And then they come out in the, in the, in the third quarter and, you know, they put the game away like most good teams would do when they make adjustments. And the Jets have to stop having these self inflicted, um, you know, penalties, turnovers, and costly moments where they don't think things out and play the game the way it's supposed to be played 
And, you know, it's been a recurrent thing, but you get that a lot when you have arguably the youngest team in the NFL. No doubt about it. You mentioned the turnovers, five of them for the Jets yesterday. You're not going to beat anybody if you turn it over five times. You're especially a good team like the Buffalo Bills. But, you know, when we look at a football game and break it down, one of the key categories you always want to zero in on is the third down conversion rate, right? Jets offensively yesterday, three for 13 on third down. Okay, Bills have the top rated defense in the league. But then on the flip side, you look at Buffalo. They were only four of seven on third down, Bart. You know what that tells me? They only were faced with seven third down opportunities, meaning they only needed first and second down most times to get those 10 yards. So they yeah. really had that offense as a high octane unit yesterday. Yeah, and then on the other side, right, Mike White saw something that he never saw before because it was all sunshine and roses because the first two opponents that you played pretty much played the same style of defense. This time they went against a team that was that was uh, multiple. They played, you know, cover one. They played, you know, they majored in cover two, but they played two man, and they never really let you know what they're in. You know, they 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 move post snap. You watch the safeties and, and um, um, Hyde, and I forget the other guy, um, Jordan Poirier, Poirier Michael and, Hyde. Poirier, yeah. and Poirier. These are veteran high level safeties who can fool your eyes. And early on, I thought the movement hurt Mike White. Um, while he was trying to figure out and decipher what coverages he was facing. And it took him a while to kind of figure it out. And by that time, you know, the, the damage had already been done. No doubt about it there. And, you know, the running game really couldn't get going efficiently yesterday to maybe take some of the pressure off the passing game. You know, and he was under duress for a lot of the afternoon, too. And, you know, that's how this game can humble you, right? We hear it all the time. You say it from playing it all those years. You know how it is. But, you know, it wasn't all that long ago, just a couple of weeks, where people were talking up Mike White, player of the week, and he had that great performance against Cincinnati. Yeah. Started off good against Indianapolis before he got hurt. And then he had one of those welcome to the NFL moments yesterday, which, look, a lot of quarterbacks are going to have against a defense like that Buffalo Bills team. And well, Tom Brady almost, had it yesterday. <laughs> Tom Brady had it against Washington, absolutely. And he was not really uh, too inclined to talk about it afterwards for those that stuck around for that postgame press conference, which absolutely. was like a minute and a half. But there's going to be more days like this, unfortunately, for a youngster like Mike White. The question is, how do you learn from it? How do you correct those mistakes? And how do you go out there next time you're faced with that situation and work through the struggles? Well, the thing is, you hope that it's the next time, right? For Mike White, he hopes that it's the next time because the reality is, you know, he was he was auditioning, right? And that audition goes as long as you play at a high level. I don't know if four interceptions, you know, warned you another opportunity to be able to 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 play, right? I don't know who if, if he's been named the starter or not, but you know, Joe Flacco went in and he and he you know, showed a good account of himself. Zach Wilson is getting healthier by the day, and it's healthy, right? Still sharp and still. So maybe, you know, the competition is going to be good for everybody to try and come out and prove who's the best quarterback for the week. And to do that, you have to have good practices, right? You know, there's no such thing as perfect practice, but it's a, it's a you know, but you have to try and, and be perfect in practice, right? To try and be able to understand the situations, to perform at a high level so that when you get to game day, you can be a high percentage decision maker. The better decision maker you are, the better your team is going to have an opportunity to win football games. Dan Gross and Bart Scott here on Inside the Jets. We're brought to you by Selective Insurance. Be uniquely insured. Speaking of Mike White, Bart, let's hear from the Jet quarterback. After the game yesterday, he caught up with our very own Bob Ushusen. Mike, what do you think went wrong out there, at least at the start, having a tough time getting to a rhythm against, I guess, a really good defense? Yeah, I think you uh, you hinted at it. We just we couldn't get in a rhythm, and that's just executing across the board, starting with me as the, as the quarterback. i got to take care of the football. And, and go out there and execute the plays and, 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 and get us out of bad situations. And that's, that's what it boils down to. How about some of the decisions that you have to look back on, a couple of the picks? Um, when you look at the tape, what do you think you're going to learn from this? I think it was a little too aggressive in, in, in some spots. But uh, like, like you said, i got to learn from it. And, and, and I'll be damned if I let this game beat me twice. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch the film. We all are. We're all going to learn from our mistakes. We're going we're gonna to get better from it. And that's the only thing you can do in a, in a situation like this is, is learn from it, embrace embrace it, and 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 don't let it beat you twice. What Coach Sala say after the game? No, I just brought it up and, and told us that we're gonna we gotta we gotta do some soul searching. We gotta look in, in every one of us and look in the mirror and find a way to get better because we we were a better football team than than what we showed out there today. Thanks, appreciate it. Thanks.
All right, so that's Mike White with Bob Shoes and Bart. You know, look, it's a collective thing. It's not just necessarily one guy to blame, of course, when things don't go right. I mean, you think about, you know, the Corey Davis fumble right at the end of the first half there where the Jets were primed to maybe at least kick a field goal and cut yeah. into that deficit. I thought that at the end of the second quarter, start of the third quarter, that's when things really got out of hand. It was only 17 to three at halftime. And look, it's not the ideal position you want to be in because there's still a lot of football left to be played. But that start of the third quarter, Buffalo takes the drive right down the field puts up a touchdown then Mike White gets picked off the first play of the next series Buffalo takes that and puts seven more on the board after that and you're looking at 31-3 basically in the snap of a finger and then it was game set match yeah it should have been it should have been 10-6 going into halftime but you know coming out you would hope that the adjustments would have been made you know you think about your Davis White making a tremendous play understanding that his guy went outside they didn't really occupy the backside third guy cover three you know, most great corners are going to start looking for work once their work has been taken care of by the the curl flat defender. He climbed high, and Mike White never saw him coming. And 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 you know, you have a turnover, and you know that was the beginning of the end. Um, but you talk about being able to come in and be able to understand conceptually what's been, what's happening to you, right? And you know, understanding how you have to play clean games, and understand that you know. If you want to beat a good opponent, you have to make you be consistently great, and somebody else has to make plays as well. You know, on the, on the flip side, the Jets have really struggled in being able to turn the football over. You know, from a defensive standpoint, and that's something that they have to work on. You know, what I mean, because you have to give your offense, you know, more opportunities. You talk about right now, I think that the Jets are minus ten in the turnover department. They have to be better than that, right? You talk about turning over the ball, flipping the field for your for your offense, and setting them up for easy scores so they don't have to march the length of the field on 10, 10, 12 play drives. That's something that you can affect, you know, by working on yourself, making sure that you have a turnover circuit, make sure that you, you're actively thinking about punching the ball out when you can, you know, because you see a lot of these young guys, they try and make a punch the ball out and they'll secure the tackle. You know, being the third, fourth guy in, going for that football. Right. We see that happen all the time. It happened to the Jets in the Colts game. And they have to start implementing some of those same things to be able to try and get extra opportunities. You know, stealing possession, stealing field position, that's what turnovers benefit you. And like you said, they're last in the NFL in turnover differential, which, you know, ideally you'd like to improve upon here over the final eight games of the season. One of the things that's also noticeable from, let's say, the first quarter of the season to how things have gone over the last few weeks is – the pass rush isn't necessarily getting home as much as it did right. in those first three, four games here. Do you think that's more a byproduct of other teams went to school on what the Jets did defensively? Like, for example, you saw the difference immediately in that Falcons game in London because the Jets were coming off the seven-sack performance against Tennessee and Tannehill. Falcons took that tape and made sure that Matt Ryan was getting rid of the ball like that to where the Jets couldn't tee off on him, and maybe other teams have copied that blueprint moving forward. Well, no, I, th I think they burped the baby a little bit, but I think some guys are dealing with some things. That everybody out there doesn't look fresh. And listen, when you get to this point of the season, you know, you hope that you got, you know, limited injuries and your your, your injury report isn't as long as, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, isn't as long as a Buick, so to speak, right? And, you, and that's why, why it's important, you know, to learn how to recoup and how to heal up. Because what happens is you don't have to be 100%. You just have to be at a better percentage than your opponent. And that's something that you can handle. That's the discipline that we talk about. That's to making sure that you invest in your body. That's the acupuncturist. That's the ART guy. That's the chiropractor. That's the masseuse. Those are all the things. And when you have a young team, they, they're so young, they don't know how to do those things. And they don't really have the resources to invest in their body like that. But it's so necessary because it's the small things that break down that start affecting the big things. And this is when, usually when you start seeing it in young players because this is the most football that they've probably ever played and the most snaps that they've ever played, whether offense or defense. And you, when you look up, you know, we're going to be approaching the time where the college season would be over with, and guys going to right. be doing something they've never done before, and that's when that rookie wall comes. But the rookie wall doesn't come, you know, at game 11. They start coming a lot earlier because the guys hit a little harder in this, in this league. Guys are a little stronger in this league, and guys, you know, are a little bit better at this league. No doubt about that here. And still eight games to go. You almost have a half season pretty much here for this football team. So got to get right here fast. When we come back, Bart, we're going to be joined by a member of this Jets defense. First year linebacker Jared Davis is going to join us right here on Inside the Jets, presented by EY, building a better working world. 
And welcome back to Inside the Jets. Dan Gross alongside Bart Scott. It's time now for our player guest segment brought to you by EY, Building a Better Working World. And we're joined by first-year Jets linebacker Jared Davis, who's nice enough to give us some time here on the program. Jared, it's Dan Gross and Bart Scott. Thanks for spending some time with us today. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Appreciate y'all for having me. Hey, man, it's good to have you back healthy. How's the rust coming off slowly in your football eyes, you know, being that, you know, you missed a lot of time. Now you're back and trying to get your sea legs underneath you. Nah, man, it's tough, man. Just to get back in the thick of it, it's, it's been challenging. Like, it's one thing watching and, you know, helping out guys that that were playing uh, while I was hurt, you know, just making sure, like, having coach eyes and having players' eyes is two totally different things. But, you know, as the weeks have gone, I feel like I've gotten better, uh, gotten more, like, just progressively uh, comfortable with being out there again. And now it's a matter of just taking that, continuing to take the steps I need to take to get back to being who I really am out there, you know, to be able to give, help the team out as much as I can. Of course, the physical adjustment of being out and trying to get your body right and rehabbing, that's always going to be a challenge here. But I'm sure also it was difficult for you, Jared, that it's your first year with a new team, new system. You know, you get hurt right towards the end of training camp. I'm sure that was difficult to process as well. Yeah, definitely, man. It definitely took a shot on me mentally. Um, it was very hard. Uh to stay in a positive place. I mean, right away when it happened, you know, I felt like I was more positive than, I, than I've ever been um, with any injury, just knowing that, you know, this is a challenge that comes with playing the game. But as the time goes on and you feel separated from the group, uh, it's very challenging to, uh, to, to show up every day, you know? But I think that's one thing I started to reward myself for. It's just a matter of coming to work every day and bringing my best, not just not just being a body in the building, you know, but hey, like being super intentional about my rehab, being super intentional about having conversations with guys while they're passing but doing the training room, you know, when I can grab somebody's ear or something like that and just letting people know that, you know, just keep, keeping that connection alive, you know. You talk about connections, man. When you look around left and right and behind you, now you got a lot of guys that still got a little Similac behind their ears. A lot of young, they're young. They they don't really understand the game. They know their job, but it's hard to kind of be able to kind of tell everybody else their job and be mass communicators. You know, how's the chemistry coming along with you and C.J. Mosley? Because when most people that don't understand it don't play the position, a lot of times there's a lot of communication between you guys, and you got to have that nonverbal communication. That only comes with being around each other and understanding – what he sees and seeing games and plays and formations the same way. I know the the, the week against uh, the Colts, they kind of had you guys changing strength emotions a lot and had mm -hmm. you guys running around like a fire drill, you know, but you know, when you have chemistry with somebody, you've been around them a long time, you know, you're going to look at CJ and say, Hey, hold on. I don't worry. We'll just switch positions. They ain't not going to have us flip flopping. So how is that process coming along for you guys, you know, in the middle? You know, it's going pretty well, you know, and I feel like, Earlier in the year was going at a very, very good pace. You know, we were set where we were and um, we were getting comfortable with, you know, there's a certain situation that come up like that in practice and we'd be like, hey, let's just chill, let's do this. Um, but that time off, I feel like it really kind of put a damper in that, man. It kind of made it harder. So it's something that, like I said, you know, it's gotta be more, like more intent put towards that throughout the weeks. and. Just making sure that when we prepare, when we're watching film in the meeting room, where we're doing a little extra behind the scenes, like just making sure that, hey, like, bro, let's let's talk this out. Like, let's see, like, how do you see this? How do you not see this? And that's pretty much how we go about it. But um, it's just something that we got to put more time into, you know. I think it's it's the the challenge of um, not having things go your way, having to show up every day after tough losses, like. It just it makes you it makes you want to go in that shell as a human being, you know, but it's still like coming out every day, fighting through that and, and having purpose with what you do and making sure that, OK, I'm defining what I'm going to do every day, how I'm going to show up and now let me see how I can bleed this energy out into the guys around me. And just making sure that everybody knows, not only me and CJ, but the young guys on defense that you mentioned too. So you know, just making sure that everybody is it knows that, hey, this is a tough moment that we're going through, but we can rise up. You know, we can rise above this and, and get on the other side of it at, our, at whatever pace we want to go at, you know? Yeah, the quote, no Eddie, about it. the sun will come out tomorrow, correct? Yeah, man. My bad. Go yeah, ahead, man. Dan. 
So, you know, the, it's the right attitude to have, certainly, when things aren't you're going your way as a team. But you mentioned some of the youth that you have, not just at the linebacker position, but on the defense as a whole. It's your first year with the team, Jared, but you are a veteran of this league. You've got a lot of rookies on this defense, right? This team has had rookies play more snaps than any team in the NFL. What's the challenge of making sure that, okay, they know what to expect as they go through these struggles and how to maybe deal with not necessarily having the immediate success when you begin your career in the National Football League? Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, it's very tough. It's very, very tough because it's like it's a battle with within yourself um, to make sure that you know that, hey, like we're not winning, but it's like, what can I do to make sure that I feel like we're winning, you know, so I can make sure that we're getting better. So when we show up to the next game, it's not it's better than the first game and it's better than the second game and it's better than the third game. Every time you step up to the plate, like what's going to make sure that this is my best chance to be successful out here and just getting guys to understand that, like you're not going to come out in the NFL and just knock the ball out the park or knock, you know, you're not going to just come kill guys. Like you got to chop away. You got to chop and you got to chop, you got to chop. And the more energy that you put on downing yourself or the more energy you put into, you know, that self, that negative self-talk about whatever, about it, maybe about yourself, maybe about the scheme, maybe about the team, maybe about the coaches. The more energy you put into that is taken away from be, becoming successful. So just getting guys to understand that. And then just going back to what we said earlier, like reaching out, man, like making sure that guys know that, hey, like this is challenging and not being afraid to express the challenge that you're having, like, where you are because you got to understand like this is a league that's full of veteran guys like me uh I'm a, I'm a fifth year guy this guy's older than me on the team but I lean on those guys I talk to them and I give them some of my internal battles because I'm sure that they've been through stuff that I'm going through and I've been through stuff that some of the rookie guys are going through so it's just a matter of and it's it's I to put some of the onus on myself too man like I got to I got to take more time with those guys, too. Like, I know we talked about just that last question, but I got to take more time. I got to be super intense about that because it's like, yo, look, what you're going through is normal. Like, it's normal, but there's ways around it. You don't got to just live in that. You know, you don't got to exist in that. They don't have to become you. So it's getting guys to understand that and let them know that, man, this it's going. It's all going to come, but you got to just keep working. Yeah, this league, this league is unforgiving, and nobody's going to feel sorry for you. So you either can lay down and stay down, or you can fight to get back up. You know, with that being said, you guys have taken two, you know, hits on the chin in the last couple of weeks. You know, the defense gave up a lot of yards and, you know, points on the board and things of that sort. But you guys have some very winnable games. How do you kind of keep everybody's mind in the right, you know, right perspective, understanding that you guys got some winnable games and, you know, make sure that you don't allow those two losses to kind of spiral and bleed into the opportunities to get some victories? I mean, I think the biggest thing, we kind of hit on it today, and we were just talking, excuse me, sorry about that, but we kind of hit on it today. Um, just about getting on the same page, man. Like, you can't be afraid. One thing that we had a lot of earlier in the year um, was we were kind of a quiet defense, you know? We were kind of afraid to speak out there on the field and talk and communicate. And now it's like, okay, we're starting to open up. We're starting to really point things out. When we see things, we're starting to communicate. What's this look? What are we playing to this look? Like, all right, we're on the same page, cool. But now it's even taking it deeper. It's like in the film room. All right, man, what is this split? Is this a, are we, what are we playing to display? Are we playing? This, are we playing basic or four? Are we tightening this up? Like, what are we doing? Like, how are we going to play this? You know, and it's like, we got to make sure that everybody sees it the same. And there's work that goes into that. And it's like, if you don't understand something, don't be afraid, bro. Like, I think those are the two biggest things. Be on the same page and just not having fear of, of not getting it right away. Like, there's a lot of things in my, like, there's a lot of times in the NFL like where I've I have literally sat in a meeting and been like, uh, what? And didn't correct it. So now I got to get coached hard because I was afraid to just say, hey, coach, I don't get this. 
And that plays into who you are as a man, like having to grow up and become more mature and just say, hey, bro, like, if we want to get this right, like, I got to know what I'm doing. And everybody's got to know that I know what I'm doing. So, you know, it's 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 one of those things. It takes big people to do what we're doing, man. Like, <laughs> it just does. Insightful indeed there. Hey, Jared, hang on one sec. We want to hear more from you, of course. We're coming right back with more with Jet linebacker Jared Davis right here on Inside the Jets, presented by EY, Building a Better Working World. And welcome back to Inside the Jets, presented by EY, Building a Better Working World. Dan Gross and Bart Scott joined by Jet linebacker Jared Davis. And remember, Jets fans, you can watch Inside the Jets through the Jets app, presented by Fubo Sportsbook. Go to the App Store or Google Play right now and search official New York Jets. Let me take you back to the offseason. When you were in free agency looking for a place to sign, what made the Jets such an attractive destination for you? Um, man, I don't know. Like it's it's really it's really interesting. And it's like this, I feel like it's the second time I've asked this question. Um, I really like the scheme for one thing. Uh, you know, I really enjoyed the fact that it was kind of getting something back to something I was familiar with. Um, and then I kind of spoke with Coach Solid a little bit because I was going through some stuff off the field. Um, you know, I, I didn't think I was going to play football this year, let alone again, um, just because I, I, I during my time in Detroit, really my whole life, I'm playing this game since I was six years old. But, you know, over the course of my life as a football player, like I somewhere along the way, I crossed the lines of football, the football player, Jared Davis and the person, Jared Davis. And when that happened to me, like I kind of lost sight of okay, these are just losses and these are just wins. And that became like how I operated, how I carried myself every day, day in and day out, regard, uh, based on what happened on game day, you know? So that kind of took me in a bad place uh, as, you know, we didn't win a lot of games in Detroit, but um, yeah, I, I went through a little, you know, self, did a little work on myself uh, during the off season, at the end of our season and, um, yeah, I really had a long, like for a long time there, right up until free agency. I did not think I was going to play football. And I didn't understand, like I, I, the big question I had was, why would anybody see value in me as a football player? You know, because I kind of didn't see that value in myself as a person until I kind of did that work. So it's like, damn, you know, I, I'm a part of a losing organization. I felt like I was a loser in a sense, you know, and it's like, nah, that, that wasn't the case. Like I had to kind of come to that understanding. And um, really just it kind of reinvigorated me to come back to work, you know. Well, so what, yeah, is, is what that what it, I'm sorry, Bart, I was just going to follow up with Jared. Like, so what ultimately made the decision for you that, yeah, I do want to continue playing football and ultimately became here with the Jets? Yeah, I mean, I think I guess it came down to um, really Kosala and the team and like them seeing like them seeing still seeing something in me that I could bring to the table, you know. And um, just coming to an understanding that, like, it's going to take a lot of work for sure, but it's something that I can bring that can help the team win. And I feel like that that really helped me see, like, okay, you know, I, I was doing things to see the value of myself as a person. But then, like, they were like, nah, bro, like, you got it all twisted. Like, you got to understand this thing ain't easy. It's not supposed to be easy. And... You know, that's kind of how I can bring that same energy to the young guys, letting them know, hey, bro, this is where I was at, you know, like, but them just seeing that light in me, like it really helped. It really attracted me to this organization. And it was very genuine, you know. You know, what happens is, you know, somebody had sounds like they had a defined role for you and they saw value in your skill set and said, hey, within our system, you can flourish. Maybe you're in a system where you didn't weren't able to do what you're comfortable in and natural in what you're doing. And, you know, in this league, not every player is schemed diverse, right? Some guys are just great players and they're great no matter where you put them. They'll find a way to be great. Some guys, most of us are system guys, right? You know, mm -hmm. West Coast system guy, three, four type of guy. I mean, I can remember you're sitting in the same seat at one point where Jonathan Vilma once sat. You know, when they went to a three, four and he had to fight those guards all day, he went about that life and he asked for a trade. And sometimes yeah. because you don't have success on the football field, we think that we're not good as a football player. But then sometimes, you know, being able to get another opportunity, understand, hey, let me give this another shot. And the problem is we live our lives in a, in a fishbowl, right? So everything we do or don't do is critiqued and criticized, right? What people don't realize outside of football is every play of our day 
is either a plus or minus, right? And that can wear on you, right? And sometimes yeah. those those minuses add up and you start thinking they define us and it's hard to find because you're also, you're maturing as a football player, but you're maturing as a man at the same time. And the problem that we have as football players and as athletes is we define ourselves by what we do and what we do should never be about who we are. Who we are is how it reflects and it is shown by what we do, whether it's football, whether it's whatever business we are in, you know, our core values are our core values. But so that's the hard part that you have. And you do have a testimony to go talk to the young guys, a guy like Zach Wilson, who right now is struggling, who's not, is not working out the way that he, he, he envisioned it. But what people don't realize and what you need to realize and what the Jets players need to realize is that we're not defined by our successes. We're defined by our failures. Because that's what a growth is, right? Because when you when you lose, everything that you did to contribute to the loss has to be um, has to be um, dissected, right? But when you win, things that can make you lose get swept under the rug because you got the end result that you wanted. So yeah. right now, you know that's really where you guys are at, but and that's your value also to the team. The fact that you can go talk to a Zach Wilson, you can talk to anybody that's struggling who feel like, hey, these minuses are starting to add up. Coach is pointing out point me out on, on film and say, listen, man, I've been there, right? It's not about what happened to you. It's about what you're going to do about it. So I commend you for doing something about it and not letting people take your joy because sometimes playing from ever since you were six, but remember you were playing ever since you were six to get to this point, right? Yeah. We, everything led up to this point. So you don't want to yeah. give up when you get to, when you get to the part that you dreamed of, right? But sometimes losing can take your joy. So, you know, just a little words of wisdom because I've been there undrafted free agent, Lost my spot, you know, was defined by being on special teams my first three years, trying to crack the hardest defensive lineup to crack in the Baltimore Ravens. You know what I mean? Uh, Figuring out how, how do I prove that I'm better than Ed Hartwell or or I'm next to Ray Lewis or Terrell. So how do I prove that, right? So, you know, you guys are in a process, and what you have to understand is how to enjoy the journey and not so much the destination. Because when you get there, it's like, eh, now where's the fun in that? The fun is the struggle. Without a doubt, man, without a doubt. And I talked to my dad about that last week and he was just giving me like, he gave me a super big insight because he was in the Navy. Um, and I asked him, I was like, man, dad, like, I felt like, I, fe I felt like, I felt foolish for never asking him this question. You know, he's he's in the Navy, the military, like team teamwork is the biggest thing that, can, that contributes to guys being successful because it's about life or death at that point. So you got to work with the people next to you. You got to depend on the guy next to you. And it just became a matter of regardless. One thing that he said to me that stood out the most was regardless of if you win or if you lose, you have to attack the work week the same way. Because like you said, certain things happen when you win that get swept under the rug because you won, you survived, you know? But it's like in our business, in the military for sure, like, those things that you messed up or that you fouled up on, like next time that could cost you your life in the military. And like next time that's going to cost us the game in the league. And it's like making sure that that's where like the most attention is put into, like you said, executing what you need to do and, and, and just focusing on the process, man. Like that's the biggest thing. Like, I appreciate you saying that for real. Like that means a lot. No doubt no about it there. And, and, you know, to close out here, Jared, still eight more games left for this football team this season. I would think that the message, not just for yourself, but for every guy in that locker room, coaches included, is that the final chapter for this 2021 New York Jets season has yet to be written. Do you view this as an opportunity here with still pretty much half a season left to go? Oh, most definitely, man. Most definitely. I feel like, this is not the first time I've ever been in this position, you know, like it's for a lot of us, like it's not the first time we've been here, but it's just a matter of clearly defining and deciding what you're going to do and then going to do it, going to get it by any means necessary. And like, it's, I mean, it, it, it's to the point now where to me personally, like I want to win. You, know, you never have to question that, but a win or a loss is not going to decide what I do on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday when I step out there on the field. Like, that's not going to change the effort, the passion, the energy, the drive, the consideration, 
um, the connection that I'm trying to make with my team. Like, that's not going to change any of that. Like, and I think once we all get to that place, like, consistently across the board, through the challenging times, not just when it's easy, um, things will really start to turn around for our team. No doubt about that. Well, Jared, thanks for a couple of minutes here today and, you know, sharing some of your story with us and all the fans out there. We really appreciate it. And best of luck the rest of the way. I'm sure we'll be talking to you again real soon. Thanks a lot. All right. Thank you all, man. And, and thank your dad right. for us for his service. We appreciate, you know, coming off the hills of Veterans Day. No doubt. Absolutely. No doubt, no doubt about that as well. That's Jared Davis, Jet linebacker, joining us here. Still more to do on Inside the Jets, presented by EY, Building a Better Working World. And welcome back to Inside the Jets, presented by EY, Building a Better Working World. Dan Grasso alongside Bart Scott. And Inside the Jets is brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app today and use code GREEN for a special offer when you sign up. It's only at DraftKings Sportsbook. It's time now to hear from one of the young Jets stars on offense. That would be rookie running back Michael Carter, the team's leading rusher. And after yesterday's game, he was joined by team reporter Ethan Greenberg. Here with rookie running back Michael Carter. Michael, what was Coach Sala's message to the team after this loss? We just we got to find a way. You know what I mean? First, we can't <clears throat> shoot ourselves in the foot. I think we did that a lot, like way too much today. Um, not the, you know, we're a good team. We just we need to show it. Over the past two weeks before this game, the offense red hot. What went wrong today? We just, we just turned our, uh, we just shoot ourselves in the foot too much. And people, everybody going to point to the quarterback because he threw interceptions, but there's a lot that goes into that. So he can't just take all the blame on himself. And I know he probably will because he's that type of guy. But it's everybody's, everybody's responsibility to take care of the ball, especially when you don't have it. You know what I mean? So obviously the ball's in your hand. When the ball's in your hand, you want to take care of it. But you got to put yourself in the best position to make sure that your teammate takes care of it, whether that's an extra block or extra strain or whatever it is. So, Greg Van Roten was telling me that one of the things that you can't do is you can't overcompensate. You can't try to do everybody's job for everybody. As someone who's young in this league, how do you make sure that you do the job to the best of your ability without trying to do too much? Yeah, you can't. I mean, he's right. You know, like you, you can't do too much, but you can do your job the best. You know what I mean? And, and you can do your job within the structure, but then figure out how to how to add just a little bit to it to make that difference so it's just it's it's not the, it's, it's easy you know you just you just got to do your job and I feel like, you know you do your job you're interviewing me right now right so it's the same thing I, everybody just got to lock in a little bit more Michael on the ground or total for you, you had it north of 80 scrimmage yards on the ground what was the difference between this game versus the last couple games where you were a little more successful and how would you evaluate your play uh Buffalo's a good defense. They got a great team. Um, you know, they're you know they're they're going, they're trying to win a Super Bowl mode right now. You know, and I feel like a lot of credit to them. Um, uh, me personally, I don't know. I guess I had to go back and watch the tape. I don't, I don't know exactly how I did. I feel like I, I know I can be a lot cleaner, but um, just from a perspective of how did I do, um, I figure out tomorrow. Awesome. Michael, appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so that is Michael Carter with Ethan Greenberg. And get your tickets to see the Jets host the Dolphins on Sunday, November 21st at 1 p.m. at MetLife Stadium, presented by ShopRite. Lock in your seats at nyjets.com slash tickets. And, Bart, you know, you look at a guy like Michael Carter. We always talk about the youth and the rookies on this football team. This is one guy who hasn't disappointed. It's really going to be fun to watch Michael Carter's game continue to develop and grow in the years to come here, I think, if you're a Jet fan. No, absolutely. And, you know, I know Te uh, Tevin Coleman came back from injury and, you know, maybe that took some of his touches away. But I like how this guy gets stronger as the game goes on. And I hope that they start featuring him and eventually, you know, name him as the starting back there, because I think he's good on both the run and the pass. And he's tough. He's tough in between. And you love the character in which, you know, he always displays when he has an opportunity to speak not throwing his quarterback under the bus, trying to provide a, a soft landing for him, saying, hey, listen, we all messed up just because he threw the interceptions. It's a lot that goes into that, and we all have to be better. So that's a good teammate, not pointing the, the finger, but always pointing the thumb. And that's something that guys look to when you look to who's going to be the leaders. You can't really appoint leaders. Leaders um, kind of reveal themselves and kind of – He'll show themselves. And I think Michael Carter showing himself as a very young leader and he'll be ready to handle more responsibilities, you know, by the end of this season and going forward. 
Leaders are earned. Leaders are not given, as they say, right? Um, weird kind of day around the NFL as we make the segue there. Give me a game that stood out to you. Well, I mean, I think everybody, you know, you know every week we have this type of uh, game, right? Uh, we It started with Thursday night, right, where we thought, okay, there's no way that the Baltimore Ravens are going to go down to South Beach and lose to the Miami Dolphins. All of a sudden, Lamar Jackson just, you know, they had a, they, they had a game plan. They executed the game plan. The Baltimore offense was anemic. And once again, Thursday night football strikes on the visitor team. But nothing tops what we saw on Sunday. We wait, wait, wait. About- did Thursday did Thursday night football strike or did South Beach strike? Well, a little bit of both. You know, that's that's like a double <laughs> dose. You were talking about South Beach and Thursday night football struck all at the same time. That's a no-win situation. That's why the Baltimore Ravens fell. But, you know, you got to tip your hat to the Miami Dolphins. But also, you look up in Sunday, Tyler Heineke outdueling Tom Brady. They lose Chase Young, but the fact that they were able to win, and it's not the fact that they were able to win, right, because they can lose, but the fact that that defense has been so um, touted, nine minutes and 12 seconds, the Washington that football drive. team was able to take off the clock when the – when the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense knew they had to get the ball back because they were down. And then to have it capped off, going for it on fourth down with a run and a walk-in touchdown against a defense that was believed at the beginning of the season couldn't be ran on. Well, man, it's problems in Tampa and the defending Super Bowl champs has to try and go back and pick the pieces up like everybody who lost on Sunday. Vita Vea got nicked up in that one too, right? I mean, he's their run stuffer, of course. And we know the Tampa Bay secondary is a little bit vulnerable. They lost a lot of bodies back in that secondary here. But you're right. I mean, that was they that lost was the Chase Young. They lost Chase and they Young. lost Chase no Young. Montez, no, no Montez Sweat with their backup quarterback. So listen, everybody has some hard, heavy lifting to go. Everybody's losing people. Like you expect the Tampa Bay Buccaneers coming off a bye in which they lost going into the bye to come out like spitting fire. And it's funny, too. That's a revenge game, right? Remember, Tampa won there in the playoffs last year in the nation's capital. And they struggled. Washington, you know, they kept it close there at the end with Heineke, as a matter of fact. So they get some revenge and get the win here this time around. But I'm sure Tampa would rather have a playoff victory. And you you know what? I You know, one more thing about that game. And this was refreshing to see. You know, like we always think that the superstar players can't be, you know, given tough coaching or tough love or, you know, told (laughs) exactly like it is. You heard Bruce Arians after that game yesterday. He basically said, no, it's not the wide receivers. It was our quarterback. Our quarterback didn't play very well, talking about those INTs. Yeah, and also saying, hey, man, we're a dumb football team, right? And how often did I tell you, I say it all the time, that a lot of these guys in the league are dumb, right? They don't understand. Like the football acumen, it's, it's it's been more put on the physical gifts and not the mental gifts in this game, right? We always flex that muscle and work on that muscle, but we never talk about the people who think the game, the people like Tredavious White who saw, oh, my guy went away. Okay, I don't stop. Let me look for work. Let me climb up and get me an easy interception because the quarterback doesn't see because he's reading left to right, and I'm on the right, and he'll never see me until the last minute until the ball's gone, right? We don't we don't reward that. We don't reward the football acumen. We award the guy that's just you know getting there by pure pure athleticism and force. We don't we don't get it with the guys that come up to the line of scrimmage and get you to jump off sides on 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 second and, and five or third and five just because he knows how to inflex his his voice or the guys that know how to quick snap you when you got twelve on the field trying to figure it out getting free plays. You know those are how you go from good to great. You know, a lot of these guys have a lot of talent. They're good, but they'll never be great until you start thinking the game and understanding and anticipating what's going to happen before it happens. And, you know, yesterday was an interesting day in the AFC West because Chargers come home, they lose to Minnesota. You have the Denver Broncos come home, they lose to Philadelphia. And then you have Sunday Night Football where Vegas is at home and the Chiefs go in there and beat them. And just like that, Kansas City, who, yes, they don't totally resemble the team we've seen the last couple of years, but they're looking down on everybody else again in that AFC West. Yeah, we ain't in Kansas anymore. I tell you what, you know, you got your your heart bleeds for um, the Las Vegas Raiders and just what they've had to endure as a team this year, right? This is the first week where they kind of had off, but then they were still trying to replace that productivity from rugs and they try to do it in the form of Deshaun Jackson. He had the costly uh, turnover, Brutal fumble. but it's going to take, yeah. it's going to take a couple of weeks for him to be able to learn the nuance within the offense. And they just got to try and stay afloat. 
right? And it's not about where you are. It's about how you continue to grow in these last eight games. Well, you're going to come down to some really great games, and it's going to be for the division. And you can just go there and look at what happened with Cleveland, getting select. And once again, Baker Mayfield comes up short when his team needs him most, when he doesn't have it, the, the, fewer, the, the full complement of all his weapons. He's come up short, and he's outplayed by mac and cheese. No doubt about it. Good win for the Patriots. Nobody expected yeah. that to be so lopsided, probably. All right, we have about a little over a minute left here. Real quick, looking ahead to next one here for the Jets. Dolphins back in the division, looking for that first division win still, and it's going to be Tua, who's going to be under center for the Miami Dolphins, coming off a big win, as we talked about, against the Ravens here. What can the Jets expect to see here at MetLife Stadium? Well, you can see, you can see, you know, that defense was humming, right? And that defense, you know, still features a lot of talent on that side of the ball, led by Xavier Howard, a guy that's just a show enough baller. You know, they got some young talent in, in, in Russo um, and all those guys out there. Oh, no, not Russo. Yeah, yeah, it is Russo. Is it? I don't know. Yeah, I think so. Russo's on you, Buffalo, ain't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think about the, his teammate that was in Miami. I forget his name right now, but, you know, they're playing I know you're at a talking high about, yeah. yeah they, they're, they're, playing at, they're playing at a high level right now. And listen, they're feeling confident, right? And the same way that the Jets say, hey, this is a winnable game for us, understand that every team that you're saying that about is looking at looking at you the same way. And the Jets going to have to match that intensity because I know once people – and what a, a lot of these young players and Solomon and I don't even know either is that the Dolphins look at this as their Super Bowl. Where we consider the Patriots our rival, they consider the, the Jets – their rival and you know getting that inside information from jason taylor has reminded me that hey this is a much bigger game for them did they really get up for this week they have this is jets week so they better be ready to match the intensity because you don't want to fall down early and, and, and have to fight your way out of a hole no doubt about it there jets will try to pick up their first win in the division bart great job by you my friend we'll do it again next week look forward to it all right, he's Bart Scott. I'm Dan Grassa. Thanks for joining us here on Inside the Jets, presented by EY, building a better working world. So long, everybody.